Good morning. It's my pleasure to share with you this short presentation on grapevine fertility and yield components. I did prepare this presentation with my colleague, Dr. Anne Pellegrino, who is working at Montpellier Supagro. And this uh, talk uh, is part of the session on grapevine pruning. Uh, is part of the session on cane pruning or guillot pruning. During this presentation, I will speak about the concept or the rule of 70-30%. So, I will try to explain what is behind speaking about grapevine yield component what is behind the 70 and 30% of yield production. Grapevine yield components, as you know, it's a two years story. So during the first year, within the Latin bed, uh, the differentiation of what we call the primordia of inflorescences did occur. And then you have winter, you have dormancy, and dormancy needs to be released. And then year two, at bud break or from bud break onwards, the Latin bud is starting to grow. And then this is when and where you have the growth, the elongation of the inflorescences. And on the inflorescences, you have the differentiation of the flowers. And then you have the period of flower fecundations. Because as you know, for a berry to develop normally, uh, one normal seed is needed within the berry. To make a long story short, this is the 70% part of the yield components. The 30% part is linked to the number of berries and their volume. So from nuison onwards, from berry set onwards, the yield will be mainly due to the equation berry number and berry volume. And this is perhaps to me the best period uh, to predict uh, the yield. Having said that, and to make a bit of a joke, the best stages to predict the yield is at harvest. So this slide is showing it's another way to show the 70% and the 30% uh, parts of the yield component. So the blue and the green dot points represent the 70% from bud break to flowering, including flower fecundation. And then from berry set to harvest, this is the 30% part of the yield. And on the right hand side, you have a figure which is nicely showing a very good relation between yield in tons of production and the number of bunches, knowing that on those bunches, the number of berries or berries are fixed. And then the growth of the fruit is now mainly due to water and nitrogen, to make a long story short. This slide is showing the organization, the morphological organization of a Latin bud. And this is an histological section of a Latin bud during winter. And then you see that within the Latin bud, you don't have only 
one uh, future bird, but at least you have three birds. And it's interesting to know that because if something is happening to the main bird, then, for example, spring frost, which will destroy the young, very young uh, primary shoot or the uh, principal bud under development uh, from bud break onwards, then it's possible that the second bud or the tertiary bud uh, will go under development. Of course, they are less fertile, but still, it's better than nothing. And on the right hand side, you see a cane which is or a vine which is uh, uh, bleeding. Uh, this is what we call in French les pleurs de la vigne. And this is due to the fact that uh, before bud break, you need to have the right soil temperature and the right hair temperature to break what we call now the echo dormancy. And when the root start to function again, then it's possible for the Latin bud to start their development. Interesting here to understand that while the primary shoot is growing, then at the axillary of each leaves, you have a future Latin bud. And at flowering, we know that, or we have observed, that the very first bottom Latin buds are already differentiated. I'm speaking about the one, two, or three first very bottom Latin bud. So around flowering, around pea size, you have already done the differentiation of the bottom Latin bud, which represent the next year crop. Obviously, the climatic condition and the vine physiology will matter for the yield components. And we already know since many years that bunch and canopy microclimates are very important for the differentiation of the Latin bud. And the main abiotic factors which will affect the differentiation of the future Latin buds are the temperature, the light, and the vine water statue. So again, to make a long story short, the main role of a training system is to help to manage canopy and bunch microclimate, of course, with cultural practices. Those two figures are nicely showing the effect of light and temperature on the differentiation of the Latin bud. I mean on the differentiation of the future primary shoot and inflorescences. And on the left hand side, you see that you need a certain amount of light within the canopy for the Latin bud to work properly in terms of differentiation of primordia of uh, shoots, leaves, and inflorescences. And on the right hand side, you see that uh, you need a certain uh, temperature for this differentiation uh, to be achieved. And the threshold, the positive threshold, will be between 20 to 35 degrees, meaning that low temperature or very high temperature could affect the differentiation of the Latin bud. These two figures are showing the effect of respectively vine water status expressed here, measuring the predown leaf water potential and the nitrogen status of a vine. 
So a port temperature and light, water and nitrogen are important factors impacting on latent bud fertility. What we do call latent bud fertility is in fact the number of primordia of inflorescences which will be differentiated within the latent bud. So why cane pruning? Cane pruning is used for varieties like Uni Blanc, for example, for which the basal latent buds, the bottom buds on the cane, are not or less fertile. So you need to increase the number of buds per vine or per square meter to increase the yield by increasing the number of latent buds, so by increasing the number of clusters for a vine, and then after, of course, per hectare. So, as I already said, around flowering year one, the uh, bottom uh, latent bud are normally differentiated around flowering, and you see on the figure on the right hand side that there is a gradient in terms of latent bud differentiation along a cane. Why? Because, and, and you see that you have a decrease in bud fertility uh, at the end of the season. Why? It's just because at the end of the season, the climatic conditions are not good enough now to for the Latin bulb to be able to achieve properly the, uh, their formation, their differentiation. So again, it means that uh, climatic condition, vine water status, vine mineral status matter. So this means that a longer cane, when you practice cane pruning, the Latin bud fertility according to the position of each buds on the cane will vary. And this variation uh, depends on the previ previous year uh, climatic and physiological condition. This slide is showing uh, the first stages on the left hand side of the development of the inflorescences on the primary shoot and the second photo is showing inflorescence, one inflorescence at flowering stages. Keep in mind and it's very important that from bud break to flowering and fecundation the carbohydrate reserves are crucial because the vine is living on its carbohydrate reserves, which has been refilled the previous year. Obviously for water, nitrogen and minerals, the roots are providing, uh, if available, those elements, but the leaves are not functional. They are functional, but they are sink and not source. And this is why the carbohydrate reserves are very important. These are transversal sections of a flower, of the ovary of a flower. And you see that within an ovary, you have four ovules. And as I said, just one normal seed is enough for a berry to grow normally, to develop normally. So just one uh, fecunded ovule is enough. And again, uh, this is a very important stage uh, looking at yield component. This stage is part of the 70%. And this stage will determine the number of berries per cluster. So again, factors affecting fecundation, flowering and fecundation, so water, temperature, wind, rain, carbohydrates, obviously, and some uh, micronutrients like boron are important uh, for this uh, period for the 
fecundation of the ovules for many reasons that I don't have time to develop currently. So, as you know, during uh, flowering and during the fecundation period, uh, it's possible to get what we call coulure and milandage in French, which will result by the drop of flowers or young berries. And this is due to a problem with fecundation, with berry fecundation, problems which are linked to climatic and uh, physiological uh, issues. And it's, uh, it's where and when a vine can really lose uh, a lot of uh, yield. Yield or future yield, of course. So apart the abiotic factors, remember that diseases uh, can affect uh, flowering and uh, fecundation, flower fecundation. So diseases can affect the 70% of the yield component. So when all berries are fixed to the cluster, then berry growth, berry development is starting. The first stages is the green growth stages and you have a sort of lag -like phase and then you have from Verizon onwards another growing period. Uh, and this curve, which is very classical, is coming from a population of berry. Uh, we, are, we are working a lot on a pear berry basis and on a pear berry basis it's a, it's a bit different. Anyway, uh, the main factors which will now affect the volume of the fruit will be water and nitrogen to make a long story short. We all know that the seed number is important uh, for the volume of the fruit, but it's not a linear relation, meaning that uh, you can have the same berry fresh mass for berries having one, two or three seeds. And this is just showing the important uh, effect of other factors as water, nitrogen, cell numbers. We don't really know about that one, etc. So from Verizon onwards, as I said, the berry is loading sugar and water. And normally on a per berry basis, the volume of the fruit will, will double from uh, the onset of Verizon up to the plateau of berry sugar accumulation. The plateau of berry sugar accumulation is reached around 26 to 30 days after the onset of Verizon. And it's important to keep in mind that, that from the plateau of sugar accumulation, a fruit will start to lose water because as an hypothesis we think that the phloem now is no more functioning. The xylem was perhaps no more functioning from the raison onwards but from the plateau of berry sugar accumulation the phloem as well is not functioning anymore and then this is where and when the fruit starts to lose water. And the ultimate uh, stage of water loss is berry shriveling. And this is, of course, very important uh, in terms of uh, yield. Two other points from the plateau of berry sugar accumulation. And because the fruit is not connected, very well connected to the vine anymore, uh, even if you are under irrigation, it will be very difficult to compensate the loss of water with irrigation. But you have to keep in mind that it's complex. Why? Because you have what we call the asynchrony of berry development, meaning that within a cluster, all the fruits will not reach the plateau at the same date. So this is something which is very important in terms of yield component. It's part of the 30% 
and we are uh, doing a lot of studies on that topic. And the Australian uh, colleagues are studying what we call the programmed cell deaths within the pulp of uh, the fruit, which is as well part of yield loss in terms of uh, berry shriveling and berry water loss and berry shriveling. So to summarize, uh, you see with this slide that speaking about water, for example, uh, in fact, a vine, uh, needs, uh, a vine needs water from pre-bud break to post-harvest. Why from pre-bud break? Because you need to refill the soil water content to have a proper uh, latent bud development and to keep a proper fertility, latent bud development, including the, the, the inflorescence development, etc., as we already saw. And then why post-harvest? Because you need to refill the carbohydrate reserves. Keep in mind that I spoke about the plateau of berry sugar accumulation, which is reached 30 days after the onset of Veraison. And keep in mind that the carbohydrate reserves start to be refilled from the plateau of berry sugar accumulation, and not only from post-harvest. Anyway, the vine physiology, the vine water statue, uh, post-harvest is very important to contribute because you need uh, active leaves to contribute to uh, refill the carbohydrate reserve. So, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, it will be with pleasure that we will try to answer to them, or I will try to answer to them, because my colleague, Dr. Anne Pellegrino, is not with us currently. Thank you very much.